lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. <laughs> You're doing all right. Doing not, all right. Not great, right? Not great. <laughs> um, I'm, I, we, we may pause from time to time for me to cough. Yeah. Uh, We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. You've been doing pretty good since I've been over. So. I, I know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's building up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably um, is. There, when I woke up this morning, I I was like, oh, man, like I feel all right. I think things are okay. I even like did a little exercise. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then I started coughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then it starts. Um, I mean, but I did finish. Like, I, I, I didn't do much. I mean, I just like, um, you know, stretched out and. Um, uh, did some push-ups and sit-ups and um, went for a, a brisk walk. Yeah, while it was still seventy-two degrees or something before it got up to eighty, whatever it is now. Yeah, so I thought it was going to storm today, but it turned out warm. Yeah, like warm and sunny. And yeah, I was about to say and beautiful. Like I remember yeah. looking at my phone this morning, like, oh man, I better get out there pretty quickly. Um, because it's supposed to start storming in just a little bit, and I I, I never can figure out when they say. When they show the little thunderstorm thing at 11, if yeah. that means that between 11 and 12 or between 10 and 11, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, so, you can't pinpoint it. And, um, and I, I stayed in bed for a while this morning. I like, I hadn't been sleeping very much cause I hadn't been able to breathe. And, uh, so I, 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 I didn't oversleep, but I didn't get out of bed early. Yeah. And, um, uh, and I, I, I finished my walk. And got back here before I, I started to not be able to breathe again. I started yeah. coughing again. And then, but I thought that, uh, you know, I thought that maybe I'd cleared things up in the shower. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, the like steam and so forth, which was a couple of days ago. I must have taken six showers in a day. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, that was the best I, I felt in the entire day was when I was standing there and just, like, breathing in the... the um, the, you know, really humidified humidity, air. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I, I think I'm on the mend. That's good. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, and I, I proved that I can do everything that I'm supposed to do at work from not at work, except for process checks, because obviously I have to have the checks in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I can do everything else. Nice. And that that's kind of a nice feeling too. So um so I see you're wearing your LP Alabama oh, shirt. I am. That's right. We didn't get one this year. I'm kind of disappointed. Oh, no shirt this year? No shirt this year. Um, so how was the convention? It was uh, It was a convention. It was nice. It was nice to see a bunch of people. Um, there were a bunch of new people, too. Good. Um, I mean, we probably had 50 or so people there. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not very good at judging that. Yeah, I'm not ever very um, good at that either. But uh, it was, uh, I don't know, it was litigious. Yeah. Uh, of course, they, they start you off with uh, um, bylaw stuff. Yeah. Man, I hate that. <laughs> I really do. I just don't care. It's it's so funny because like, <laughs> so yeah, I know because I feel the same way you do. I'm like, man, this, I just, I, I, I'm not into that part. Yeah. But there are so many people that that's the reason they're there. Oh yeah, like that's that's the fun. Like, <laughs> look at this great rule that I wrote. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, oh man. Um, they they passed a bunch. Apparently, there were some issues I didn't keep up with. Uh, like, there was some drama and some weirdness, I guess, at the executive committee level at the state um, over the past year. And so they were trying to tighten some stuff up to make sure that some things didn't happen well, again, and this, or this that is they a, had an outlet to how to of how to deal with how it to if deal it did. with them. Yeah, because I mean, I vaguely kept up. I mean, I don't want to really get into all of it, but this is kind of common. Like this, it yeah. by the by the time a year has kind of came around, the executive committee is usually pretty spent. Mm -hmm. Like the the people who are on it, a lot of them are ready to get off. Yeah, that's true. So you know. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's just party politics. Like it's just mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's. Uh, I mean, the job is thankless. It's it's a volunteer position. It takes up a lot of time. These people still have to do their own regular jobs as well as this. I mean. Yeah. I, I understand. I have never. I, I've never sought 
uh, state level office. I, there was a guy, um, there was a newer guy there actually that turned around at one point and he, he asked me, he said, um, do you have any interest in any of these positions? Cause I, I, I feel like I want to, uh, nominate you for something. I was like, nah, please don't. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I get it. Um, if I had more free time, I mean, I would be interested in doing like I just don't have the time to commit to something like that. I mean, I barely have the time for the the county commitments. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and I feel like I could do more with those commitments. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I definitely am not interested in state. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more interested in the local and the national level. Like the state level is like the exact level that I don't really care about. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, there was some I don't know. There was some important things that they did probably that to make us a more professional organization, um, as we grow. And, uh, I I mean, I I think that that stuff's important. It just doesn't matter much to me. And I look at like, I voted against almost everything. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and there were, there were a bunch of those like new subcommittees or new, you know, I don't know, commission groups or whatever that, um, you know, Frank Delman. I do. Yes. <laughs> um, that me and Frank Delman were the only people that voted against. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it was like, it, it would be like, you know, um, 20, whatever, uh, yays, two nays and a bunch of abstentions. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was, he and I were the two nays. Yeah. And, um, we were talking about talking to the f- now former chair uh, Gavin, um, after, uh, some of the voting sessions when we had a little break for lunch or something. And, um, he and I were both saying the same thing. Like, uh, you, you see that we have just created the bureaucracy that we're trying to avoid or that we complain about everywhere else. Like we're yeah. <laughs> burying ourselves and we're trying to be <coughs> bury ourselves in bureaucracy just the same as all the other parties, Yeah, um, is what it looks like. And like, that's why we were voting against. It's just like, yeah, you know, come on, we ought to be able. How, how many layers do we need for an organization as small as we are? <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully it'll be bigger, but that is the hope. But um, it's not yet. <laughs> and and that, that's you know one of the positive things that I have to say is that um, our, our our local um, member and friend uh, Sam Bowler was elected as the new party chair. Yeah, um, very excited about that. Me too. Uh, I like Sam a whole lot. He's he seems like a genuinely good guy. Um, and he's motivated and he's bright and he yeah. like he has plans. Yeah, he um, and he's motivated with with a purpose. Like he mm-hmm. he definitely he seems like he's got he he's made big commitments and I feel like he's he's got plans to back that <laughs> stuff up. Um and he's got some experience from outside like just I mean, you know, business experience that kind mm-hmm. of makes me believe that he's the type that can get some stuff done. Yeah. Um Yeah, um I, I wish him all the best. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, I, and I am excited that he's, that he's doing this. So, and, and, um, I still will thank him every day for taking over the treasure of Bowen County. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because I had done that for like six years or something. Yeah. Uh, and had had enough. Yeah, and now you don't have to. <laughs> Yay. Um, so there was, uh, there was all that. Um, I, so years ago, well, I, people that have been listening to the podcast from the beginning have probably heard me say um, more than once talking about the Libertarian Party that there were too many people in it that thought that they were at a party instead of in a party. Yeah. Um, I feel like at the state level we've gone the other way now. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are too many people that take the in a party thing too seriously and forget to party (laughs) yeah you gotta have some fun too right yeah (laughs) Uh, so um i mean i did take a i I opened a the a bottle of uh, leaper's fork Mm -hmm. for the last night um that we were there um and uh and shared it around it was a hit first off and plenty of people had some drinks so that was you know that was nice to see yeah um so maybe maybe they can loosen up a little bit. There yeah. were there were an awful lot of suits, and yeah. I I used to wear a suit to those things too. But yeah, um, that's because 
there were too many people that thought they were at a party instead of in a party. <laughs> you were trying to flip it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so now it's like jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys, relax. <laughs> Let's lighten up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, but it, it was a it was a good event. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think that it was. It didn't. Mm, they didn't go for as much this year as they did last year. Yeah, they really swung for the fences last year. Um, and that was a great event last year. It, it was. Um, but it was a huge loss in yeah. terms of money. Yeah. Oh, and, I can imagine. And I, mean. uh, and I think that they, you know, there was a, just a little bit of, a little bit more consciousness about how much money they had in the bank. Yeah. And that's fair. This time. Yeah. Um, now, if uh, Sam gets his way, that's going to more than double. He's going to more than double the uh, income in the next year, the revenue yeah. from donations and what have you. So um, we can get that from so, again. So Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, didn't he just get in trouble or something? So, um, no, he's not in He's not in trouble. He's... he So... I'd actually like to mention this real quick, just okay. what's going on Go with ahead. Afro Man. Sure. Um, so <laughs> it was quite a few months back, maybe sometime late last year, his house was raided in Ohio um, mm. by the local sheriff's department. So they didn't find anything. Um, apparently they stole some money from him, um, like through the raid or whatever, um, stuff that they found that money that they just like kept, like it wasn't like a ton of money, like four or $500 something, um, tore up his house, um, didn't find anything. And of course, you know, it's your government. So it's not like they're going to reimburse him for any of the thing, yeah. the trouble or anything they've caused him. Yeah. So, um, he had, um, security cameras like all over the house. So he had footage of everything that had went on and that they did. Mm -hmm. So he used it in a music video bashing the sheriff's department okay um, and you can find this video it's out there it's everywhere um and so he used the footage and bashed them and um so now they're they brought suit against him. They? so now yeah. they're bringing a suit against him because they because they he used their likeness in a video and they mm -hmm. want to be paid for it <laughs> so it's, and that's where that's where the case is like that's where we are with things so it hasn't went to court or anything yet but the suit's been brought well there's your public servants so yeah like i mean how low can you go man like <laughs> so interesting okay yeah, yeah. That, that's the that's the afro man situation <laughs> so. well um well uh, so what else is going on in the world <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, there was a. It was some fairly successful bourbon hunting while I was in Auburn. Yeah. Um. I found a couple of bottles that I was that I was kind of excited about. One of them I ever paid for, but yeah. just don't see it very much. Yeah. Um. Then maybe you didn't overpay for it. Well, I definitely was, did because <laughs> I actually found it uh, in another like little hole in the wall store the next day for like $12 less than I paid for. Oh, it. well then you overpaid <laughs> yeah. then. I, I, if I could have just held off, I mean, I just didn't expect to see it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the little hole in the wall store, it was the only one. It was the last one on the shelf. Yeah. But it was this like tiny little place that if, if you weren't bourbon hunting, you probably would never walk in there. Yeah. And the truth is that they didn't have much of a selection. That was like one of the very few things in there that I would have been like, oh, I, I'll buy that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well. No. Well. You know, I, I, I guess I could have known that it would. They had like three bottles at the at the first store, probably because it was overpriced. Um, and I, I probably could have known that. May I could have come again. back the next day. Oh, yeah. And it's still I could been look there. around first and then come back the next day if it. It, it, and yeah. still pick it up but oh well maybe better luck next time yeah I, but you have it it'll be yeah i have it it'll yeah. be fine it'll yeah. be fine yeah um i can afford an extra 12 bucks <laughs> <laughs> this time this right time. This time. <laughs> gotta be more careful next time yeah um oh uh let's see i got my taxes back uh because i sold that property oh I yeah owe quite a bit yeah i bet you do <laughs> <laughs> pretty upset about that yeah. like well how come i don't get money back every year for them you know inflating the the currency, currency? <laughs> um because that costs me money every year like i'm paying them for i don't know what and yeah. they're still costing me more because of inflation and so now in this case i the like one of the few positive investments i could make because of how they've screwed up the monetary system yeah i 
still get taxed on again. And I don't think that's fair either because the money that I spent to buy that place in the first place, I'd already paid tax on. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Oh, well. How many times can they tax the same dollar? (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, they're trying to find out. (laughs) Yeah, they're working on it. So uh, that sucks. Um, Good thing I didn't just like spend all that money. Yeah. Should have invested in silver. Mm, I have silver. Silver's down. So silver's down and at least... um, Oh, really? Hang on a moment. You you keep talking. I'm going to look this up. And... um, yeah, I've got it on the app. Or it was down as of um, last Tuesday when I bought silver. It was down to $23. Oh, that's not down. Um, I mean, that's down from like where it was at in the highs. Um, but yeah, and also, you don't have to pay tax on that if you buy it here locally at least. I don't know how the tax thing works like overall. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, if you buy um, Silver Hill locally or Silver Hill here locally, yeah, you don't have to. It's ta- it's not taxed. Oh yeah, my my metals are more valuable than they were when I bought them. Now gold now gold is up. Gold's yeah. way up. Um, I say way up. I mean I don't know where yeah, it was it's, at. Uh, Nineteen seventy. Yeah. An ounce now, and silver is about twenty four yeah. an ounce. That's about where it was. It's up just a hair from the other day then. Um, but no, that's not a bad price for silver though. Like I mean. I don't know what it ran traditionally, but I know that's down from on the charts I was looking at. Well, when I was buying a bunch of silver, I was paying like 18 an ounce. Oh, really? Yeah. So you bought them better than me then. Um, and uh, when I bought gold just recently, I well, where was I? I was like 18 something, 1850 maybe. Yeah. Um, and that was paying to buy it. I mean, it was worth less than that when I bought it. I just figured I would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm glad to see it getting closer to 2000. That makes me feel better about my purchase. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to lose on that, <laughs> no, especially not. with the, with everything going on in the world. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So but, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. I, now that we're, what's, now what's, that we're 17 minutes into the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's on your notes over there? You said um, you had notes the other day. I have, I have two notes. All right. I have Trump prediction of violence. Okay. And then I have TikTok and AI. Ah. Which one of those you want to hammer out first? May as well hit TikTok and AI. Yeah. First, I guess. Um, I was just trying to like I hadn't. I've been in the bed a lot. Yeah. Um. So I, that should translate to I've had plenty of time to read stuff but it but you haven't been reading yeah no. um so i was trying to catch up on the was it the restrict act the restrict act does the tiktok bill yeah um i mean i hadn't so I, uh, matt agarist wrote an article um urging everybody to contact their congress people and tell them to vote against it and yeah. um but it was like full of this alarmist stuff and his links went to like TikTok videos or Twitter <laughs> threads or whatever. I, like, yeah. So I, it wasn't like like well documented. Yeah. I, what I wanted. Or well is, cited. Yeah. I, I wanted quotes from the bill itself. From the bill. Yeah. Um. Now one of the videos just like was scrolling through the bill, but yeah, I was trying to watch it as it went by. Anyway, the the main thing though that he was talking about was that it is um, it's essentially a surveillance bill for the internet. Yeah. For everything. I mean, that's that's been my understanding from what I've heard. I haven't read the bill myself either, so I don't mm. know verbatim. I'd like to get some details on specifically what they're planning to do. Yeah. Um, and I don't have that, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, it looks like it's, from what he said and, and other things that I've seen, um, it looks like they're essentially trying to take away all digital privacy. Yeah. I mean... Aren't we essentially there anyway? Yeah. I mean, but now, I, in fact, um, yeah. De facto, yes, I think that we're already there, that we don't really have any digital privacy. Yeah. Um, they're trying to make it de jure as well, though. They're trying yeah. to make it legal oh, for okay. us to not have any digital privacy. Yeah. I mean, like, we all know that the NSA is tracking every little bit and bite that travels over the Internet. Yeah. Um, so if they want, they can look at everything that we've got. Yeah. But we also know that that that's a scandal. <laughs> yeah. You know, that that's not that's not strictly speaking legal. Yeah. Um 
which is why it was such a, a big issue when Snowden released that kind of information, right? So yeah. uh, I, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to to make it legal. Now, from my perspective, it doesn't make it legal anyway. Like, there is still a constitution that has a Fourth Amendment. Yeah. But, I mean, we seem to be ignoring a lot of that anyway. Yeah. Have been for a long time. Yeah. So the, there is a feeling, obviously, in... Uh, at the federal level, that they can legislate around the Constitution. Yeah. That the Constitution isn't the base law, like that everything else has to fall under. Yeah. That it's something to that you can that you can work around. Yeah. <clears throat> it just makes me think, man, it would be like amazing if there was a way to like just hit the reset button and reduce everything back to just the Constitution. Yeah, You know, like roll back everything that's unconstitutional, just roll it all back. Like what kind of world that would be <laughs> to just hit that reset button. If it I happened mean, all at once. <laughs> it'd be an interesting, it'd be an interesting time. <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, be, it'll never happen, but no. I'm just saying like, like it, because I mean, everybody knows, like, it's not like a, a secret, like we're so far from the constitution. It's insane. Well, right now, I think it would be chaos if you were just to like hit a reset switch, um, because people have become too dependent on government for all kinds of things. For everything, yeah. Yeah, and government likes it that way. Oh, uh, yeah. It makes you far more compliant. It gives them leverage. Yeah. I I used to hear a lot um, from more liberal sources, podcasts, and so forth. And I, I, I guess I don't really hear it as much as I used to. And maybe, maybe the podcasting I listen to isn't as liberal as it used to be. And I get my liberal media from reading now instead. Yeah. But, um, but it, it wasn't even politics stuff. It was you yeah. know science things and so forth. But just with really with the bin liberal progressive hosts. Yeah. That would start talking about other things that they knew nothing um, about. A, a, like a great example was. Um, Talk nerdy, uh, Kara Santa Maria is yeah. a like radical progressive um, science communicator. Yeah. Uh, but she can't help herself but talk about politics on her show, which I don't generally mind. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't mind until Trump came in office and then it became impossible to listen Just to. Just unlistenable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, this was something that she used to say all the time is that she never understood the Southeast. Yeah. Um, why they kept voting for Republicans instead of voting in their own self-interest to put Democrats that would take care. I mean, because there's such uh, high levels of poverty and so forth in the Southeast. Why won't they vote in Democrats, you know, that will give them the That'll things that they That will take care need. of them, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, obviously I couldn't respond to her directly, but, I mean, this is a fairly common sentiment. Yeah, um, you hear that for sure. And the the answer is this, is that the people in the Southeast recognize that whenever— you accept something, a handout from somebody, you're creating an obligation. Yep. And so we'd rather be self-reliant. Absolutely. There, there's an understanding there that, yeah, it might be better in my short-term interest to have people giving me stuff. But then what kind of what kind of arrangement am I in? Yeah, exactly. You know, what happens when they call in the favor later? Yep. I'd rather just deal with my own problems. Yeah, handle it on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, and not create that obligation or that debt. No. Yep. So, uh, I don't know. I Going back to the, the TikTok thing, though. Uh, I, I think uh, TikTok is an excuse, right? Um, there's a, a few other things that are going on here. Uh, I, I tend to subscribe to the, um, the theory that they've been promoting on the No Agenda show, where it's really about um, it's really about the market yeah. that it's the American tech companies that are pushing uh, this kind of legislation to eliminate a rival. Yeah, because TikTok's big. Like, I mean, there's no question about that. Like, they're the they're the big player right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, that's where everybody's moving. That's yeah. where it's all going. Like, yeah, Facebook is dying 
Twitter yeah. is dying. Instagram is dying. It's all moving to TikTok. Yeah, Facebook may be done sooner than we think. Like, if people are just not on there. Like, even myself, like, I'm not, like, I used to be on there a ton. Like, I'm not anymore. Yeah. Um, it's just, and I'm not, and with me getting away from Facebook, I'm kind of just, I haven't picked anything up in place of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is kind of nice. Maybe we need to move our podcast promotion to some other platform. Like TikTok. <laughs> like TikTok. <laughs> uh, we don't have video. Yeah. A TikTok's an interesting platform. So I'm not on TikTok at all. I do have the app on my phone, which I, <gasps> yeah, I know they're they're tracking me, you know. Yeah. But um, but that's solely because the kids and my wife will send me videos so I can watch them. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to have the app to watch the videos, you know. Yeah, I know, but it's easier. It streamlines <laughs> it. Okay. Well, uh, the other thing is. Um, on the governmental level, they gain out of some kind of legislation like this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, where they um, they can, you know... Uh, it gives them more control. Yeah, it, they can control the information. They can watch the information. They can keep track of you better. Yeah. And, uh, and they like that. Well, and that's what people need to remember. They're all concerned that the Chinese government's going to use this platform to track people and to feed us bad information and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Just remember what they're wanting to do. The reason that they're upset about that is because they want to do the same thing. Yeah, I, that's a big part of it is that, again, the uh, U.S. government can control the American companies. Yeah, the American social media companies and are already getting information from them. We know. Oh, we know that. Yeah, absolutely. They can't do that with TikTok. Yeah, they they can't control TikTok and they can't control yeah. the information on TikTok. So that's yeah. uh, that's uh, you know part of the purpose I think here. Um, now, in terms of the information that TikTok can glean from your account and what videos you watch and pushing out information to you and so forth and so on. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. I, I this is a thing that I this well, is a concern that no, I do not understand. Well, it's no different than any other social media company. I, yeah. I think there's reason to be concerned, but not just for this one, but for all of them. What is China going to do to me? Well, yeah, with my info. What what danger is posed to me from China having information about even about where I am? Yeah. Or well, my so they can, so, when so when they forth. so when they send the hit squad. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> That's it. But there again. I'm a hell of a lot more concerned about my own government having that information than the Chinese <laughs> government having that information. Yeah. Uh, my own government has some real power over me. My, the Chinese government doesn't. Yeah. No, that's true. And so I, I'm just not at all concerned about that. I, I think yeah. I'm not concerned about it because the greater concern is what my own government can do with that kind of information that they're already getting from all these other companies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'll say this, like, because talking about the the breakdown they've been given on no agenda for this, Mm -hmm. um, something else that I really agree with that I think Adam Curry really nailed is that these algorithms that they're using are are way better at creating communities than like Facebook and these other ones and Twitter, where it's like all of this divisiveness. And I mean, I'm not on on. Um, TikTok that much, so I can't really mm-hmm. speak from personal experience. But the people who are on TikTok, like the reason it's so addicting and they, that they're just like into these videos so much is because it's all stuff that they're into. It's not mm-hmm. like a hate watch thing where it's like they're watching stuff that they don't like or yeah, it's, it's they're it, not being driven by uh, by anger. They're yeah. being driven by entertainment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and and whatever they're into, you know, Um, and that does help as far as like creating communities. And that's the reason people who are on TikTok are so passionate about it is because like that's where their people are. And it doesn't matter if you're right or left, uh, because I know plenty of right wing guys that are like TikTok guys, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and the same thing with the left, like both, both wings are like heavy in TikTok. Mm -hmm. So... And they're not, and they're not there like bickering and fighting with one another. They're just enjoying their communities. Yeah. So, I mean, there's something to that. Yeah. Um, now, as for the AI thing. Yeah. And I, I think that I can connect these two. All right. All right. So there's the uh, there's been a call by a bunch of I guess you'd say leaders in the industry. Um, to have a six-month moratorium on R and D of AI yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, 
which I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> and this is why I think it's happening. Is it's the same as this TikTok issue? Is that there's a concern about competition, and yeah. so, um, you know, we talked a lot about what the government gets out of this legislation of having more control, um, more uh, ability to see what's going on. Um, we talked a little bit about what the the American corporations get out of this, which is, you know, eliminate to eliminate a rival. But I, I think there's more to it than that is that legislation always creates a greater burden yeah. on any so new business trying to enter. It's the a, it's a barrier to entry. entry. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, to meet whatever regulations are put forth is going to cost yeah. something. And so the players that are already in it, they don't have to worry about that. They can absorb these costs. Whereas a new player, it's much harder to absorb the costs. Oh, absolutely. And it's something that you have to calculate when you're determining whether you even want to try and enter the industry or not. Yeah. And that's the reason car companies and all of these, any big business, they're always like for whatever legislation it is. Like, yes, mm -hmm. bring it on. That's the reason. Yeah. Is to, it's a barrier to entry for other mm -hmm. groups. Yes. Uh, and, of course, these are the same groups that were pushing, um, what was the open internet thing called? Oh, yeah, um, net neutrality. Net neutrality years yeah. ago. Yeah. I, I had so many debates with people about that who were like, oh, well, you know, this will finally put the Silicon Valley companies in check. And I was like, no, these are the people that are proposing this legislation. It does yeah. nothing but benefit them. <laughs> exactly. And Free and open internet. Yeah, I, I think that, of course, the, it's these same groups that now want to ban TikTok from the American <laughs> internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you know, land of the free here. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think that this AI thing is the same. I think that this is about giving them an opportunity to put some legislation in place to create a barrier to entry to any potential rivals in the future. They're yeah. trying to get ahead of it. They ran into this problem with TikTok. Like, oh man, we didn't have legislation in place to prevent somebody else from entering the market and, and you know, taking our market share. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get some legislation in place now about AI to try and, you know, prevent, preempt it, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I that's what I think this is really about. Um, the idea that they're actually just going to stop working on AI for six yeah. months is absurd. That, that's not going to happen. Um, and and they have to know that's not going to happen. So to even like propose it just seems strange to yeah. me. I mean, and Elon Musk and Steve Wozniak and these kind of, the, these people didn't suddenly become luddites. Yeah, yeah they're still yeah. for progressing the technology and the the idea of holding it back. I mean, the it only just thing seems I can come up with them. is that that they want to catch up. Like that's got to be. I, I think that that's uh, it's either catch up or stay ahead. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. And uh, I, I think it's more stay ahead. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how how much development these particular players have in this. Yeah. Um. But I, I think that that's what it's about. I think it's about staying ahead to to make sure that there's nobody else that steps in. Yeah. and surpasses them or, yeah. or to make it harder anyway yeah um for somebody else to to enter the market yeah and of course the, the ai ai is terrible anyway I, yeah. I mean it's just not the idea that that there's been like a real strong development in ai i think is kind of silly yeah. to me i i have a roomba yeah I, so years let me start earlier like i love the terminator franchise yeah i i, I it's fun yeah like it's super fun and I, I like the idea that oh well you know we created an ai um it to, became yeah Cynthia or whatever yeah, yeah it, to yeah. protect us and it ended up uh deciding that it was better off without us and you know so on. absolutely um that kind of makes sense <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and uh i remember talking about it with uh, my roommate my freshman year of college and, and he was big into computers i've never really been big into computers like i kept up with this stuff but it wasn't something that i was obsessed with in any particular way yeah um he was yeah and i remember talking to him about it one night we probably had a few and he's he said you know this is what i this is he said i'm not concerned about ai taking over the world this is what i figure is i figure at that very last moment like when the ai is about to take over the world and we only have seconds remaining 
And just at that last moment before the AI takes over, that's when the screensaver will click on. <laughs> right. It'll be fine. And reset everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, hit that factory reset button. And I think and that was 25 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and now I have this Roomba back here. And if you're ever concerned about AI, buy a Roomba. Yeah. Watch that thing try and navigate your house. <laughs> All right. It, I mean, yeah. it's supposed to be built to like understand how to maneuver around corners and not yeah. get stuck places and find its way back home and blah, blah, blah. Nope. Yeah. Doesn't do any of those things. <laughs> this thing gets stuck in the same place over and over again. It'll yeah. beep at me and say, oh, I'm stuck. Please release me. And yeah. I'll move it. And it'll go right back to that same place and get itself <laughs> stuck again. It, it sometimes turns itself off by trying to like lift its way out of a problem where it's actually wedged underneath something and it thinks it can lift its way out. <laughs> yeah. And it'll hit the corner just right and hit its power up, its own power button. And <laughs> it'll turn knock itself its own off. power off. That is awesome. That is awesome. So I'm just not concerned about the yeah. the, the danger of AI isn't about isn't about AI taking over the world. What they're concerned about probably as much as anything is uh, copyright issues. That's a legitimate concern, um, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, this thing's different. In, in the sense that they do exist and well, yeah, they're enforceable right. now. Like, I'm I'm yeah. kind of opposed to copyright, too. But Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it kind of stinks to have your stuff, like, just ripped out from under you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think there's at least an argument for that. Yeah, I mean, it's really easy to, to require citation or links or something, too. Yeah, and I think as as this thing develops and evolves, like, that's you're going to see more of that type, mm -hmm. type thing. I mean, the reason I think people are so worked up about the AI deal, right? Right now in particular is because people's never seen anything like this and like it talks to you and like you can ask it to do stuff and it does it and it's not that it's that i get from a technology like we haven't leaped that far forward yeah. but it feels like we have mm -hmm. for a lot of it, it because it is neat like i mean i've played with these things a little bit yeah it's interesting it's just calculating though I, and it, yeah it it, it it's very easily confused. And I think that right now for our government, that's probably the biggest concern because it's been such a concern since 2016, I guess, at least. And then yeah. through the pandemic is the misinformation, disinformation thing. That's, yes. well, and that's, that's their real concern that's about it where is the that it's going to pull is, bad information. Well, that and it's not information that they can control. Mm -hmm. Because this all goes back to information you can control. The same thing with TikTok and with this is that the the government's used to controlling the narrative and controlling the media and having a grip on these things. And both AI and TikTok are things that they're they're out of their hands, yeah. Like one way or the other, and they're trying to find a way to get a get a hold of these things. Okay, um, so we're in agreement. Both the TikTok thing and the AI thing is about government control and about uh, the market players maintaining their status. Oh, absolutely, no question about that. Yeah, it's not to protect you. Oh no, yeah, it's never to protect you. You're like, okay. come on, like. <laughs> and who so. need who wants that protection anyway? Yeah. I, Again, this is another one of those things that I don't understand. It's except that it falls into um, a result of poor public education. Yeah, is that yeah? There's lots of bad information out there. What yeah. you got to teach? I mean, I, I come across bad information all the time. You got to be able to suss out the I truth was from say, the, you from the know, fiction. Yeah, you got to know what's <laughs> what. <laughs> you got to be able to critique this stuff. Yeah. Um, or find sources that you trust. I mean, that's one way. Like somebody's doing it. Yeah. I, hopefully we're doing that for you out yeah, there, right. the, the listeners. We definitely try. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I feel like we've been right a whole lot more than we've been wrong about things that were highly contentious. Yeah. Or even mildly contentious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, you can't convince some people. I keep learning that about the pandemic. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, once they've picked a, a, a direction. Yeah. yeah. Um. So... And on the same note, I suppose. Yeah. <coughs> Before my voice gives out. Yeah. Um, the Trump prediction of violence. Ah, uh, yes. Because this, the, I mean, he's like a big player in this. Like he's a, he's a catalyst to all a lot of these changes in terms of the information control. Oh, absolutely. Uh, which is hysterical to me. Yeah. I if you don't see the humor in that. Yeah. You have no sense of humor. <laughs> right. Um, but in this case, you know, he said, 
Um, I don't remember exactly. I should have written down the, the his tweet. Or yeah. it wasn't a tweet. It was on Truth Social, whatever whatever you call those. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Even, I was trying to come up with the acronym, but I ain't got it. Like, I don't it was know. the so, truth. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Trump's truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he said something along the lines of that it, you know that he predicted that he was going to be arrested, and um, and then he said you know how can somebody make this decision when it'll obviously result in um, death and violence or something like that. I yeah. can't remember ex- exactly. But anyway, this has been, this got picked up and thrown all over the place about here. He's calling for another January 6th. Now he did actually call for protests. He did. That was a m- yeah. mistake. And anybody that responded to that was also making a mistake. I think like, well, I don't think anybody did. I don't think anybody did either. At least as far as I know, there wasn't any sizable protest. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, he also wasn't arrested, right? Like not to, yet. To, no, he th- has today, been he's still not been arrested. He still hasn't been arrested. I think he is scheduled next week to go turn himself in though. Oh, is he? Yeah. So they did the, they you may not have heard the, uh, okay, the grand jury came back and, and is, they are is, indicting him. They they are indicting him. So yeah, for some kind of campaign finance. As far issue? as we know, um, so okay. they haven't released. So it's a sealed indictment. So we don't know what was in it. Oh, um, another sealed indictment. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Every time I've heard that this week, I'm like, well, here we go with sealed indictments again, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but we should find out next week what the official charges are. But as as things stand, I mean, that's what they were investigating. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the more than likely, that's what it is. Okay. Now, just think of the number of investigations that have been conducted against Donald Trump in the last five, six, seven years. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite amazing to me that the man has, has been around in business in New York for as long as he has, mm-hmm. and they just don't have the goods on him. Like, because I don't mm-hmm. believe for a minute that Trump's like this clean cut no. businessman <laughs> that <laughs> that follows not. all the rules <laughs> and pays all of his taxes. Like, I don't believe that. Yeah. But the fact that they don't have the because even this, I mean, we don't know what it is officially, but if it is what we think with this campaign stuff, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a misdemeanor that they've moved up to a felony. Well. It- it's New York State grand jury, right? It is. Yes. Isn't a. Uh, um, I thought that was federal. Isn't campaign finance a federal? I thought so too, okay. but I, apparently, I the, if it happens in New York, they ha- must have some kind of jurisdiction there. Is the only okay. thing I can figure because I don't know. Okay. Um, have to talk to one of our attorney friends. Yeah, we'll have to explain. get some clarification on exactly uh, what's going on here, but. But yeah, um, but it, it is a misdemeanor charge that they've moved to a felony. So Okay, interesting. Well, uh, <laughs> man, so there are plenty of things uh, that you can throw Trump in jail for. Oh, absolutely. And so what I say is that... The, but those how? things, the, the problem is, is those things, they can also throw... Obama and Bush and all of the like that's the thing how how can George W Bush and Dick Cheney be in walking around free yeah and then we're going to jail Donald Trump for campaign finance issue yeah exactly it it because they're, they're Obama Biden also i mean they're all part of the machine like, like every living president yeah should be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> for something real. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. For war crimes. Every single one of them for war crimes. Agreed. Throw Hillary in there. You can throw all the secretaries of state and defense in there as well. I think you just throw Hillary in for good measure, but <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, her and her husband. <laughs> this, yeah. Well, he's a former president. He definitely, he's okay. definitely responsible for some war crimes. Yeah. Um, I mean, but she's got Libya. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. She's got the uh, the election fraud in Yemen. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, doesn't matter. Point is that there are real crimes that you could um, that you could charge Donald Trump with. And the problem is that you would have to hold these other people accountable, the respectable, quote unquote, politicians yes. accountable as well. Absolutely. So they can't go that route. So they can't go that route. So they find some pithy little... Yeah. You know, so and that misdemeanor the, that they're bumping up to a felony for some reason. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, we'll see if they have something else, but I, I have a hard time imagining that they do after all the investigations that have been conducted yeah. so far that haven't turned up anything. Yeah. That, I mean, he's... That this is the one, yeah, finally. He must... I mean, the only thing I can figure is he must be good at covering his tracks. I mean, they have his lawyer, or his mm-hmm. fixer lawyer, yeah. like, given... Singing. Yeah, giving yeah. the house away. Uh-huh. So, I mean, maybe they do have more than what we think they have. Yeah, I... I just, I just don't think they do though. I don't think like, so either. I, I just don't see it. And and even this is a if it is just this campaign finance issue about paying off what's her name. Yeah, Stormy um, Daniels. Yeah. Then it's an incredibly weak case. It is. There's a million other reasons that he could be paying her off to keep her mouth shut. Yeah. Besides to protect his potential of becoming president. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Not like that would have affected anything well, anyway. And, you know? and these these type of charges have been brought against. I'm, I don't remember the guy's name, but the guy that was in Illinois, um, the governor went through something like this, where he okay. was where he had paid off some some um, prostitutes. I don't know what else to call them. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hooker. Hookers. Yeah. So he had paid <laughs> off. Some, yeah. there's, a, there's a bunch of words. <laughs> there's a bunch of words. I'm just trying to find the good one appropriate for the podcast. <laughs> oh, I guess prostitute would probably be the right one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah. So he had he had paid some of these people off. Um, and they walkers? were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So, but he had done the same type thing. I wish I could remember the guy's name because um, I remember when all of that went on. But I mean, and he was found not guilty on that um, because it's just hard to prosecute that type of. Um, campaign finance crime. Mm. Like it's just, it's there's, there's a lot of reason. It doesn't have to be connected to the campaign. That's why. Yeah. You, you, it's, yeah. it's, um, um, I would think that it was actually impossible to connect it to the campaign. Yeah. Because yeah. of the other options without yeah. a reasonable doubt. Anyway. Exactly. Um, the problem Trump has is that he's Donald Trump mm. and getting a impartial jury is well, yeah, absolutely impossible. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, and getting a fair trial in the state of New York is going to be a impossible act, I, I feel. Well, going back to his call for, his quote, call for violence. Yeah. It's not what it was. Yeah. From my perspective, anyway. I could be wrong about this. Like, yeah. maybe he was actually calling for violence, but that's not how I read it. Yeah. Um, it, to me, it's just a, a prediction. Yeah. And it's the natural result of, um, of using the justice system in this manner to prosecute political enemies or people that you just don't like. Yeah, it's uh, that if people can't depend on the justice system to be just, there's not a lot of options of solving conflict other Ex- than violence. Exactly, you leave them no other choice. And so, to to me. All he was saying, really, all he was, was doing was pointing out that if you use the the legal system in this way, it will be revealed to a lot of people that this is just a joke. Yeah. That it, it's meaningless and it's only, the, the law only applies, it would pull back that, pull you back. know, that myth of the rule of law. Yeah. Which, um, which I, I think is a myth anyway. Yeah. But well, it, it would, but this would expose it in such mm-hmm. a naked way that it'll be hard for anybody, whether you like Trump or not, not to see it. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people. But there's a people, lot of people that just don't care as well, long as Well, there's a lot Donald of people Trump. that are blinded by the fact, well, they don't care, whatever it takes. The man yeah. needs to go, go to jail. Mm-hmm. Um, which I just, I have trouble hating anybody like that much like i mean i don't like <laughs> bernie sanders but i don't want to see him rot in jail like yeah. i just i don't it, it blows my mind and and it what's something else that's just crazy to me about this whole deal with trump and i'll just say it right mention it now like they it has been turned up to 11 ever since he came down the escalator that this guy is just not acceptable he's the worst thing ever um by the left and i've just never understood it and it's not just the left though there's yeah. a lot of well, there's a lot know, of establishment right. figures on the right too. Yeah. the The problem with Donald Trump is that he was an outsider. He yeah. was not part of that elite political class, and he wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. 
I, I mean, that must be what it is. And that, that, I know that's, well, in fact, I know that's what it is for the elites. Mm-hmm. I've just never understood how the little guy got on that train. On the left? Well, yeah, the, just the, your, your everyday lefty. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. I remember, like, from the very beginning, I, uh, everybody that was the left-winger people I knew were just, like, immediately, like, just... Well, because they were able to propagandize the guy as being um, racist, sexist, like, all of those ists that are just terrible. They're just the bigotry yeah. that is the worst thing that you can be Yeah. If from the perspective of somebody on the left. Yeah. I mean, it's true. I mean, it... it it just amazes me that it works so well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, it, I, I don't, I, I'm probably, this is probably hyperbolic, but it seems to me that when you're, when you're looking at how somebody on the left views another person, yeah, it is worse for that person to be a racist than a murderer. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. Well, I hope I am. <laughs> I, I don't think you are. <laughs> but but that's the way it seems to me. Yeah. And uh, I just think there's a whole lot of things worse than that. Yeah. And I'm I, not... Um, I don't... I certainly don't approve of it. It's stupid. It's just... It's ignorance. Yeah. Racism is, is just absolute ignorance. Yeah. But it's not an evil in the way that... That it's portrayed. Yeah. Yeah. It, it only, it depends on the actions. Well, I was like, fix- once you start stringing somebody up or setting yeah. them on fire or something, then it's evil. That, but- that reaches evil. But just having the natural bias or just, mm-hmm. you know, having opinions that I don't agree with, yeah. but, but just holding those opinions isn't in itself an evil. Yeah. To me, at it's least. It's just stupid. Yeah, exactly. 100% agree. Mm-hmm. And I wish that I could call stupid evil, but I can't. Yeah, well, <laughs> if that, that was the case, we'd be calling a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of evil out there. A lot of evil out there. <laughs> I watched Forrest Gump for the first time yesterday. Never seen that? I had, Well, I had never seen it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know that I've ever watched it beginning to end. but It's I, long. Dude. That's what that's what I'm getting I mean, at. Is yeah, like, I, but to, I've, I can say I've, for the most part, seen it. <laughs> I, I had to watch it in segments, but I did watch it. Yeah. Um. I, it wasn't that did, great a movie. Didn't do it for you? <laughs> I mean, it was okay. Like, it got to me. Like, it was kind of a... I mean, it was emotionally manipulative. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily consider that wrong. Yeah. Uh, or bad in a film. Um, I, I just don't think that that one was a, a very good one. The What I realized watching it is that it's not about Forrest Gump. Um that Forrest Gump is a vehicle to tell two other stories that I guess weren't long enough to make movies of their own yeah, <laughs> or, or something. Because the, yeah. it seems to me that the story is about Jenny and about Lieutenant Dan. Those yeah. are the two, those are the two stories. Those are, are the two it. main characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're separate stories. And Forrest Gump is just like, I don't know. He's just a tool. A mechanism to, to, tell, yeah, the to tell the stories about these two people. Yeah, I could go into a lot more detail about that, but I'm really done talking and we're close to an hour anyway. So we actually got a full podcast in, which I'm kind of surprised at. I wasn't sure that I would make it. Yeah. And so I think we should probably just wrap this up unless you have more to say about the Trump thing or about the TikTok and AI. No. Perk walk. Perk walk. Yeah, we'll see. Um, that would be a huge mistake too. No, but, but obviously that's not what's going to happen. If well, he's I'm pretty sure they've already. In. Yeah, he's going to go turn himself in, and I'm pretty sure that they've already made like negotiated. That he's not going to be cuffed, and mm-hmm. like how they're going to handle it. I was kind of interested though to see what would happen if they tried to take him because he still has Secret Service protection. Right? He does. Yes. Well, I don't think that they can just take him. I was more interested that if. And I've always, so this is something that's always been like a thing in my mind. When people, when they're like, we're going to have them go turn their self in, like these high powered people, Mm -hmm. like, what if they're just like, no, you're going to have to come get me. I'm going (laughs) to fortify my house to make it as difficult as possible. And so like, so in this respect, I was like, well, like for Trump, like he could like seriously like do that. Like Mm -hmm. he could, he could be like, he could just tell his supporters to come to Mar-a-Lago and (laughs) I have declared Mar-a-Lago its own nation. (laughs) Exactly. I am the dictator. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I thought that would be interesting. I mean, obviously he's going to go turn himself in, but you know, but I think the flip side to that would be, is I'm pretty sure the secret service would be bound. I mean, they're law enforcement, right? 
So they would have to just take him in. Like they're they not wouldn't. Part they of the wouldn't. Justice Department. They're part of the Treasury. Oh, are they? Yeah. I just assumed they were Justice Department. No, they're not Justice Department. They're Treasury. Um, yeah. I don't know how it would work. Sounds like a constitutional crisis. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> oh no, the whole thing's falling apart. <laughs> it's falling apart because Trump won't turn himself in. Yeah. And the Secret Service don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> whose <laughs> whose directives do I follow? Exactly. Uh, interesting. Well, yeah. that's why I think that it would have been kind of interesting. I'm just kind of, I'm just curious how, yeah. how that would, how that would play out. But, yeah. um, I mean, it could be like uh, our wars in the Middle East, where we had the CIA fighting on one side and the Pentagon fighting on the other side. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, All down at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap up. Um, All right. So, uh, we'll be back. Hopefully soon. on Thursday. Hopefully on Thursday. Um, yeah. You can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. Uh, like and share. Um, leave reviews. Uh, make comments. Um, you can email me at michael at the com. No, it's just michael at the liberty mic, right? I have no clue. How does that how, how do emails work again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Michael at the Liberty Mike.com. Pretty sure that's right. Yeah. Do emails have dot coms? I don't know. I th- yeah. Okay. They do. I, I, that's my confusion all of a sudden, actually, because <laughs> okay. I never end up having to type that part. Yeah. Yeah. It just assumes it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, well. If I'm, if I'm wrong, you know how emails work out there. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it's been a long day. I'm like all sweaty. Mm-hmm. And, anyway. Um, yeah. So, but uh, we. We'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later.